This is a $500 camera. And I get it. I almost flew out of my chair too. But this has to be the most stacked, over-engineered streaming products that you're ever gonna see. This is the OBSBOT Tail Air. This is not the same thing as the Insta360 Link or the Tiny2 that I did a video about a month ago. And this thing is massive. Just check it out compared to those two. Webcams. I can't even wrap my hand around the camera. It's kind of a sus way to hold it. If those cameras are like Squirtle or Charmander, this is like the Blastoise or Charizard evolution of them. Venusaur sucks, okay, get over it. Oddbot is sponsoring this video, and I know a lot of you are gonna dismiss everything I have to say because of that. So like, just go ahead, just leave your shill comments, and then can we move on now? But just stick with me, okay? So this is an AI face tracking camera that can connect through USB, has HDMI out, can connect to OBS wirelessly, is able to be connected to your phone, can record video internally to a micro SD card and can even live stream directly to Twitch or YouTube or Facebook or wherever you want. I mean, this is just an absolute monster of a webcam. There's so many connectivity options. Of course, you could connect it to your PC with a USB cable and use it as a standard webcam. Or you can use the micro HDMI and connect it to like a cam link or a capture card, the same way that people use like mirrorless cameras for their streams. How many times have you connected a USB camera to your PC and it just doesn't work or isn't recognized? This has a micro HDMI port, so you can just connect it to any capture card that you want. I've got one of those fancy Camlink Pros that allow you to plug in four HDMI inputs, and I can just plug the tail air into one of those inputs. This is so awesome because if you have multiple tail airs, or maybe you have a tail air and a couple of mirrorless cameras, you can have all your cameras plugged into your PC, and you're not gonna have any issues with USB bandwidth because you're not using USB. It even supports NDI and it has like an adapter so you can connect it to your PC over ethernet. On top of all of that, this is a standalone camera. So it's got an internal battery so you can connect it to your PC and connect it to OBS with no wires. You can connect it to your phone and stream to Twitch, stream to YouTube, and you can do all that while recording internally to a micro SD card. Holy shit. <laughs> Just flew out of there. I mean, this has to be the most versatile camera on the market, right? Like you could use this at home as your primary camera. And then if you want to like go outside for some reason, um, you could just like pull it from your streaming setup and use it like as a vlogging camera. And you don't even have to aim at your face because it has AI face tracking. So like no matter where you point it, it's just gonna, it's gonna be able to find your face. Now I did mention there is an app that you have to install and yes, you do need to use the app even if you're gonna use it as a standard webcam. After you install the app and set it up, you don't need the app after that, but the app is where you're gonna be able to see the feed from the camera, as well as change all the settings, control the gimbal, set it up to stream to Twitch and YouTube. It's pretty straightforward. You just turn the camera on, connect it to Wi-Fi, and then, then you'll see the feed. From here, you can slide the camera around, make it point wherever you want. You can also set up up to three predefined positions. So you could maybe have one position set to your face, maybe uh, the second preset can be pointing at your keyboard or your desk, and then the third one could be pointing at your friends that you definitely have. It's also got a slider, so you can zoom in and out up to four times. And then if you double tap on the screen, you can turn on the face and body tracking. And it's actually like really good. It's, uh, I've never been able to get it to like lose my position. It just, it follows me the whole time. It's really accurate. Uh, there's also a slider that has like a rabbit and a turtle. So I think the rabbit means uh, more sex. If you click this button, this will take you to a page where you can adjust the exposure and the colors for the camera. So you can control the ISO, the shutter speed, the white balance. And of course, there's a giant record button. So if you put an SD card into the camera, you can hit that record button, records internally to the SD card, and then you can view the media directly from your phone. Over here, you can turn on and off the gesture controls. So you can make certain hand symbols to control different aspects of the camera. So for example, if you hold up your hand, you can turn on and off the human tracking. 
which is a very strange way of wording that because it looks like it says human trafficking. Oh, and also if you hold up the white supremacy symbol, it uh, starts a recording. Yeah, I don't think China knows that uh, we're not allowed to do that anymore. Down here, you could adjust your output settings. So if you wanna use the tail air as like a standard webcam, you need to turn on UVC mode. By default, it's off. So you actually need to go into the app, turn this on, then plug it back into your PC, and then it'll be picked up like any other standard webcam. You can also turn on RTSP mode, which is going to be the way to connect to OBS wirelessly. So you just turn it on and then you go into the uh, device settings and it will give you a uh, RTSP wireless network. So that URL that it shows you, you just need to copy that URL, create a new media source inside of OBS and just paste that link there. And if you do that, the camera should just immediately pop up in OBS and you can use the camera without any wires. There is about like a one second delay, but other than that, the quality is really good and you can just, you could like put this on the other side of the room. Now, if you wanna use the Tail Air to stream directly to Twitch or directly to YouTube, you need to hold down on the record button and then click on RTMP. For whatever reason, I couldn't stream to Twitch. Like I tried it and there was nothing appearing on my Twitch stream. And then when I like closed it, um, it said I got that disconnecting thing on my Twitch page. So I don't really know what's happening there, but I did do a test stream on YouTube and that worked flawlessly. Okay, quick update. Uh, I just found out that the issue wasn't me. It was actually with the software, but the good thing is that Obsbot just released an update. So now you can just log in directly with your Twitch account and then stream directly to Twitch. So you don't need your stream key anymore. And uh, now it works. I'm, I'm actually live right now on a test Twitch account. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's working fine. And uh, I can just have the camera out and it's fully wireless and it does all the face tracking stuff just as you expect. And then finally they have the AI director grid. So this is where you could choose between each of the different camera angles and you can act like the director. So you can select between the different presets that you made before, or you can choose between a wide view, which just shows the full camera, or you can make it zoom in on your face. And then in the top left in the red square that says on air, this is gonna be what your audience is actually seeing. Speaking of controlling the camera, I found that the gimbal control was a little bit finicky. Like I always had to look down at my phone to control the camera. So they also sell a separate uh, remote. I, I don't know how much this costs, but they have a separate remote. It's like a Joy-Con. It literally has like a Joy-Con thumbstick. And I know that because I just replaced the sticks on my Joy-Cons. These look exactly the same. I'm guessing these are like those uh, Hall Effect magnetic joysticks that everyone's been raving about. But with this, you can connect it to up to three different tail airs, and then you can just like move the camera around or you could snap it to your preset positions. Um, and then you could also hold down on the P button to like set a new preset. You could also turn on and off the, uh, the face tracking. And uh, there's a dog icon, uh, which I believe is for tracking animals, which I don't have any, so I didn't get to test that. Oh yeah, and also there's like a, a laser beam, apparently. How do I activate that? There's like a laser beam, check it out. Uh, I, I'm guessing this is like for people running presentations, but I just it just has a laser beam on right on the remote. But yeah, this is so convenient just being able to move the camera around freely because you don't have to look down and it's way better than buttons. Like you just move the joystick and it, it just moves around. Now, I don't really know what this is about because it, it, it's got like these connections on the sides. Uh, I don't know what this is for. It looks like it connects to something, maybe like a switch-like device, but like, I'd, I don't know. It didn't come with anything else in the box. It just, it just came with this and yeah, I, I don't know what this is. So with so many features packed into the tail air, we still need to talk about one thing, the video quality. Like what does the video actually look like? Cause I've just been waving this camera in front of you this whole time, but what does the picture look like? Well, they actually sent me two of them, so you've been looking at it for the whole video. Also, I lied, they actually sent me three of them.
So since I've got one of those fancy Elgato capture cards that allows me to plug in up to four 4K cameras, I just plugged all three of the tail airs into the capture card and my PC just picked it up. So I had like three AI tracking cameras around my room. There's no way that I would have been able to do that if I had connected these cameras over USB. Cameras, USB webcams just use too much bandwidth. So connecting it to a capture card was awesome. So if you got one of those fancy video switchers like the ATEM Mini or you know what, actually check this out. So about two years ago, this company named YOLO Live sent me a product called the YOLO Box. And I'm not kidding, that's actually what this is called. So this thing has three HDMI inputs on it that I can plug any camera into. And I just plugged all three of the tail airs into it and they just appeared on the screen and I can switch between them. They do all the AI face tracking stuff and I can stream from this or record to an SD card. But this would be an absolutely absurd mobile streaming setup. Can you imagine having an entire setup in your backpack with three 4K cameras that are all AI tracking? It's, can you? TwitchCon is next month and there's a very minute possibility that I'll be going. And if I do, I'm gonna be taking one of these tail airs with me and just trying to grab some footage with it. So um, if you see me around TwitchCon, uh, yeah, come say hello to me because uh, I have too much social anxiety. So I'm probably just gonna be pretending to look busy. So um, uh, you have to say hello to me because I'm definitely not going to be initiating that conversation. So anyway, yeah, that's the Obsbot Tail Air. Come follow me on Twitter because if I end up going, that's where I'll be announcing it. And if I do, I'll probably do a couple streams there over on Twitch. So yeah, go follow me on Twitch too if you want to see some footage from TwitchCon. Um, but anyway, anyway, yeah, okay, thanks. Um, I'm going to go now. You have yourself a good one.